Uh, we've got some live shots uh, coming in in a moment or two about Donald Trump and his plane, which is, of course, uh, in... Florida right now. Now, he doesn't have to go to New York until he's formally arraigned on Tuesday, which is Wednesday, Australian time. The expectations are that he will either make comments in New York or back in Florida. He obviously arraigned just means charged, and there's not a bail situation, so he'll obviously be back in the air and on the campaign trail. But let's talk about this and a whole lot more with Adam Crichton, who's the Washington correspondent for the Australian newspaper. So, great man, we know that it's going to be fire and brimstone for the Democrats and it's going to be witch hunt from the Republicans. Uh, but the reality here is it's not really good for anyone what's about to happen in the next week or so. Trump will pretend that he can surge to the presidency on it, but the Democrats, well, they're going to be able to get away with potentially not having to talk about their own economic record again. Yeah, look, I think that's right, Paul. I mean, it looks like the justice system, in my view at least, and certainly the view of a lot of Republicans, has been weaponised to target a particular individual. And I think that's going to reflect very badly on the United States. And I think it's a view that, that the bulk of Americans and, and, in fact, a substantial minority of Democrats as well, uh, will, will come to that view. And, indeed, even people that really dislike Donald Trump should understand that this is helping him. I mean, not just in a fundraising sense. He's, you know, he's raised something like $9 million since... Uh, prospect of the indictment first emerged, but he's lifting in the polls and the uh, betting markets as well. Uh, he's pulling ahead of Ron DeSantis uh, far and away. I think he's about 20 points ahead and and the a lead increased uh, since the indictment emerged. So, yes, this is, you know, this is a bad for everyone. And and it's even bad for people who don't like Donald Trump. Well, I also say this too. And again, somebody... I've got a photo of the man on the damn wall, right? I will forever be uh, associated with being able to meet the President of the United States. But here's the reality, right? I think that it might be... That's great for him in terms of the nomination. But I can't see how he flips Pennsylvania, how he flips uh, Arizona, how he flips uh, um, Michigan or any of the places he won in 16, lost in 20 by being uh, arraigned in 23. Again, great, great to finally get on a debate stage against Donald... Uh, against uh, Biden again, but where's the evidence anywhere that anyone is moving from the Democrats back to the Republicans because of the treatment of Trump? Well... Well, look, I think the conventional wisdom, certainly, as you say, is that he's got no chance in 24 and that he wins the GOP nomination. But, look, I don't think you can write him off so easily because we just don't know what, for instance, the economic situation in the US is going to be like in November 24, if there's a serious recession. And there could be, because interest rates are still, you know, still climbing and inflation is still high. Then many people will just vote against the government of the day, as they do in Australia, as they do in any country. And if he happens to be the alternative then people may well forgive him in such numbers that, that he manages to scrape back in. And then, of course, Biden, who, as, as uh, Paul Keating recently said, can hardly string three sentences together, uh, you know, he's going to be even older and, you know, maybe even less coherent. And <laughs> so maybe some people will be less willing to vote for him as well. So, look, I mean, I don't think it's likely, and I, you know, I completely agree with you, it's, it's not likely that Trump wins in 24, but, you know, you'd have to give it 20 30% probability, just as a pollsters gave it in 2016. Correct. Well, this is the thing. When it's a two-horse race, guess what can happen? One of the two horses can win, including the one everyone says has got no chance. Just quickly, and I know that exactly. it's a more complicated question than ever we have time to talk about, but your sense of economics and the American economy right now, inflation's starting to fall, but it's still high. Um, we saw the wobbles with a couple of banks. Are things better than they were six months ago? Yeah, look, I think uh, the US economy has defied the doomsayers and I think it will continue to do so for some time. I think the benefit of the US is that most home loads are not variable like in Australia. So those big interest rate increases that they've had here, they're not really kicking into household disposable income yet. But given time, they will. So I think, you know, that's why I said earlier about prospect of a recession next year. Good I point. think in about a year's time, they are going to start kicking in and there will be a downturn and that's going to coincide with the election. So, so that's why I wouldn't write off Trump just yet. I mean, it could be the economy uh, that saves him. And I mean, to his credit, he left the US economy in very good shape, except for COVID, of course. He couldn't control that. But, uh, but right up until that came along, it was going gangbusters. All right. Good news, Adam. I'm coming to your part of the world. I'll be there for a mate's wedding in, uh, in August. So put Great. aside a dinner. We'll have a fun one. Thank you, mate.